evening to all. Welcome to another Peaceful Solution Character Education Teacher Certification class. You can be seated for those of you who are here at the um, uh, classroom here. Those who are watching online, welcome. Uh, hopefully uh, you've been able to follow along and, and if this is your first time watching, of course you can uh, right there on the uh, Facebook uh, page there, right at the pretty much almost at the very top, you'll see that that uh, respect unit. Uh, that's the unit that we're in. Of course, you can download the PDF and follow right along in your book. It's a teacher's manual because, of course, we are training teachers here. We're training people to be able to show others the right and proper way to conduct themselves. And remember, the character education program that we're covering, the Peaceful Solution, it does that very thing. It's the perfect guide for human interaction because if you look in society now, you can see that we need some help big time, you know, in our society uh, because people aren't interacting in a, in a respectful, peaceful way. That is, they aren't interacting consistently in a way that's respectful and peaceful. Not that there are no people, there, there, there is not anyone <coughs> in society who tries to do the right thing. There are a lot of people who do strive to, you know, do their best and to show kindness and empathy and compassion and so forth to others. Uh, but for the majority of, of society, uh, it's not that way because of the many things that we've covered from, <clears throat> and of course, if you're just uh, joining us, uh, we've already been through three units prior to this one. This is the fourth unit, which is the respect unit of the intermediate series. And, um, you know, everything that we've covered, we've kind of um, reiterated, built upon from one lesson to another, like uh, it's described the building blocks of moral character, the building blocks of character education. <clears throat> and a lot of the things that you'll hear from lesson to lesson to lesson, you know, they're reiterated. And that the purpose of that is not to bore you to death, of course, but is to drive those points home in the mind because it's those key concepts that we want to drive into the hearts and the minds of our students to get them to understand that, uh, that these factors, and this is what we covered in the very first unit, in, in the character unit, <clears throat> in the first chapter, um, the six key factors that help to make up one's character. Um, and then I, I'm not going to, because I'll probably forget them right now, but, you know, uh, influences is one of them, right? And, and, and that's what we see in society on an everyday basis, not, not only in society, in your own home, uh, you know, at work, when you're on the road, uh, tra tra traveling back and forth to work or traveling back and forth to school, <clears throat> You know, the influences are everywhere, not to, not to um, you know, set aside the influences of our, of our thoughts of experiences past, right? Because those experiences past are influential factors in how we respond to circumstances or events of the present, right? Uh, you know, if we've had negative experiences in the past, <coughs> in a particular... <clears throat> Um, event or circumstance, when we're faced with that again, we're going to look at that probably primarily in a negative way because that experience and how we responded and part of the things that were in our environment, uh, those things help to kind of shape the way we deal with that problem. So unless we've been educated, unless we've trained ourselves, unless we've seen the benefit of why we should conduct ourselves in a certain way and why we shouldn't conduct ourselves in a certain way, we're going to follow status quo. We're going to follow what is normal, okay, what, again, use that word loosely, normal, uh, until someone points us in the right direction. <clears throat> All right, so we are, like I said, we're in the uh, respect unit, unit four. We are also in chapter four of this unit, and we are still in the um, same procedure that we were covering last class. We haven't <coughs> really moved out of that, <clears throat> which is procedure, uh, proce well, technically we are, we are. We're in procedure number, um, oh no, procedure number nine, procedure number nine. Uh, let's just go back and read that real quick on lesson plan four, page E. And this is procedure nine. It says, explain to students that regardless <clears throat> of why people disrespect others in our society, there are consequences for their actions. Have students read the section 
what occurs to people who disrespect others in society, found on page 107, which is what we started to cover um, last class. We got a little bit through that last class on 107, that first half, and tell students that just as there are consequences for disrespecting others in society, there are also rewards for respecting others. Half students suggest <clears throat> some of those rewards uh, answers will vary, but guide students towards the realization that all members of society will benefit if everyone chooses to consistently respect others. And that's a key point, you know, that as teachers is something that should stick out in our minds. It, it might take a little while, you know, to stick into the minds of the students because <clears throat> you know, a lot of times young people, you know, we've all been there before, you know, we kind of want we kind of want things instantly, right? We want things to be great right now. We want the environment to be perfect right now. But the problem with that is that the only way for that type of environment to exist is that everyone has to be taught and everyone has to agree to uphold and follow to practice the things that they have been taught. And, and, and that's just as important as being taught because I mean, we've seen situations and environments where people are, are taught or trained in the same thing on a regular basis. And, you know, I'm not talking about ABCs and 123s. I'm talking about things in regards to morality, the difference between what's right and wrong. But some people will choose to do what's right. Others will choose to do what's wrong. So it comes down to us making the decision, making the choice. And in order to make that choice to do what's right, like we've mentioned before in previous classes, all the teachers have, you know, a person has to see value in themselves and value in upholding the rules that are a benefit to both themselves, others, and of course the environment. <clears throat> that value is very important. So it says, uh, answers will vary, but guide students towards the realization that all members of society will benefit if everyone chooses to consistently respect others. Half students read the section R is for the rewards of respect on page 108 in their handbooks. <clears throat> All right, and so that's procedure number nine. Procedure number 10 is on the next page. So let's go back to 107 there. And we're gonna just, uh, just kind of do just a tiny little review to catch up here to where we're gonna get started in the uh, lesson for today. <clears throat> so of course, this is respect unit four, chapter four. Uh, respect and society <clears throat> and um, and we're on our 107 it says what occurs to people who disrespect others in society now you might have heard it said have heard the sayings for every action there is a reaction and if you remember um, uh, from our, our second slide from last class um, which we have today I just used a little bit for us to kind of go back and refresh uh, the word reaction is to exert a reciprocal and you know that word reciprocal is to reciprocate. You've seen everybody knows what a sawzall is. You know, the technical name for it is a reciprocal saw. It goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Well, you exert a reciprocal or counteracting force or influence. You do something to that person, they do something, you know, uh, in response. <clears throat> you know, you startle somebody, the reaction is, ah! it's the scream, depending on, you know, how you respond to that or how the person responds to that. Some people actually swing, so you better be careful about who you startle sometimes because you might get popped in the nose or something. Um, often used with, on, or upon, a reaction with or a reaction upon. Um, the number two definition, to change in response, <clears throat> to change in response to a stimulus. Uh, kind of like water will change in response to the stimulus of cold temperatures. Liquid will turn to uh, a frozen, a solid, ice. Uh, a liquid will turn to a gas when heat is applied to it, okay? The stimulus that, that uh, affects that water, in this case, uh, it changes the composition of the water. It could be a liquid, a gas, or a solid. The number three is to act in opposition to a force or influence. And that opposition could be something like, you know, someone um, pushes you <clears throat> and you could respond by kind of stiffening up or pushing back you know in opposition to that 
Um, and so there's, there's a lot of different examples that you can, you can use in regards to that reaction. And, and if you've ever taken a science class, you've seen the reactions that come from many different elements that are mixed together, like when we were in uh, uh, elementary and junior high, we used to do the science experiment with the volcano, and you made the, the mud in the clay volcano, and then you put baking soda at the bottom, and you poured vinegar at the top of it, and you had a reaction, you know, from those two um, uh, components mixing together a base and an alkali or an alkali and an acid and then you get that reaction of the kind of volcano effect bubbling out of the top there to give you an example <clears throat> and then um, uh, we see here for every reaction uh, for every action there is a reaction and then the next part there is for every cause <coughs> there is an effect and for the next slide there again just to refresh our memories cause and effect is the law of cause and effect states that every cause has an effect and every effect becomes the cause of something else. It's kind of like, um, I think one of the, the physicists said, uh, you know, energy is, is not created or destroyed. You know, it only, it kind of just changes. So, you know, you don't have something that necessarily starts and stops. It just is a continuation of something else. Like we mentioned and bring the example of the ripple effect. You know, the ripple effect of dropping a pebble, that impact of that pebble, you know, causes the effect of the the water rippling out and the next ripple pushes the next ripple pushes the next ripple pushes the next ripple so it creates an effect and so these things take place on an everyday basis and if we think about many of the things that we've experienced many of the things that we've seen um, in in society just as a whole like I mentioned before um, I, I used to enjoy just going to the airport riding riding on the train and going to the airport and just walking through you know the terminal and security and everything there was no no all this stopping and checking and TSA and everything you just walked up to the the gate and you you know you could stand out there and look at them out the window and watch the planes take off and land and take off and land and taxi and so forth and that was kind of relaxing and enjoyable I was pretty young back then but then after 9-11 you know and the things that took place there um, wasn't able to do that anymore. Well, not only that, uh, you used to be able to show up maybe about an hour or so early, you know, to catch your plane. Now you have to show up anywhere from two to three hours early to catch a plane, <coughs> right? You have to check all these things. You can't take anything more than, than two ounces on, on an airplane. You can't, or you can't take a tube of toothpaste. That's more than two ounces. You know, you might, you know, who knows, you might try to take the plane down with a tube of toothpaste. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, um, and then they had the, um, what was the other guy? The um, was it the shoe bomber guy, or the uh, there there was some some there was a uh, was, maybe it was the underpants bomber. One of those guys, you know, it was one of those guys who you know people who were trying to sneak things on the plane and they got caught going through TSA and it made it a, a burden. It rippled out and created an effect on everybody else, a burden on everybody else who was trying to take a flight. So now everybody has to go through these uh, this effect of dealing with the cause of somebody trying to break the rules or sneak something on a plane that was not supposed to you know and it, and it makes it more difficult you know when traveling has to take place especially when the airport is extremely busy and of course nobody likes having to go through security and all that you know stuff when you have to get on a plane but these are the things that we have to deal with now in society because of the cause of someone and their immoral actions alright so for every disrespectful act there is a reaction in the form of either a natural or forced consequence. Um, on that next slide there, we have uh, that word causality, which kind of ties in with cause and effect. We read this last class. And uh, causality, also called causation or cause and effect, is the influence. Now, that's important to remember, the influence, because this is a part of what we're talking about, because what occurs to people who disrespects others in society? You know, and, and, and why did they even get to point where they're disrespecting others in society right influences also play a part in that and we'll see that as we move forward a little bit here but is the influence by which one event process state or object which is the cause contributes to the production of another event process state or object which is an effect where the cause is partly responsible for the effect and the effect is partly dependent on the cause and we gave some examples um, last class in that regards <clears throat> All right, so you have <clears throat> so you have a natural or forced consequence. Um, 
Now, he says, think of it like this. On most highways, there are speed limits. Although motorists are aware, of the, are aware that there is a speed limit, some still choose to speed. <clears throat> well, you have this the same thing when you think about consequences um, just in the environment. When I was growing up, uh, I, really, I really enjoyed going out and being in nature. You know, I, I was a city slicker. You know, I, I didn't get to do any, any cow tipping when I was growing up or anything. Of course, that would have been disrespectful to do. But, um, you know, we didn't even have cows in the city just walking around. Um, uh, uh, we had just, it was like a concrete jungle. So when I had the opportunity <clears throat> to go into the forest and camp, you know, hike until we usually went out to the Allegheny National Forest in Pennsylvania usually, um, I took advantage of it because I just really, really enjoyed nature. And one of the things that we were learned, that we were taught as we, every time we went and, and went camping was always leave it cleaner than you left it, right? You know, don't, don't leave a trace that you were there. You know, that is a bring something from outside cans or trash or whatever and, and leave it behind you. No, clean up after yourself. In fact, even if you see something that's not supposed to be there, clean it. You know, don't just leave it there because that's not a part of nature. And many animals and so forth suffer as a result of trash that's left behind by mankind. Well, when we went out camping, you know, we enjoyed uh, gathering, clearing out a, a space to camp and, you know, gathering sticks and and stones to, we, to, to lay around to make a campfire, you know, and gathering the kindling and the tinder and the, the wood to burn. And, you know, it was always a, a, a challenge to see who could actually start a fire with only one match, right? And it didn't count if the wind blew it out. But, but that, was, that was the challenge. Those were the things were, that we enjoyed. But also we were taught that when we were finished with a campsite, <clears throat> one of the things we had to do was to make sure that that campfire or that pit was completely extinguished, right? Because there is no, there are no fire extinguishers hanging on the trees out in the forest. And in a lot of cases, you're not always next to a source of water. Well, if we look at that next example there under natural consequences, um, you know, we see that on the uh, next slide there. <coughs> um, you've got off to the left, you have a, a camper, um, with their tent and a campfire. Now, to me, it doesn't look like anybody's attending that fire. And they might have actually put the fire out because you know how fires are. You know, all you need is heat, a little bit of oxygen, and something to, to ignite it. And they might have actually put that fire out, but there's nobody, nobody there to, to tend to it. So not extinguishing a, camp, a fire properly, not properly extinguishing a fire, off to the right, you'll see a natural consequence, right, of that fire catching some leaves or wood or you know sparks fly up and then they catch other things dry things on fire and then you have the huge forest fire we just had a um i think it was about a year now uh i saw it was on the news uh here around abilene area they had this uh, big mesquite heat fire that they were kind of remembering because a lot of people are just now at the point where they're kind of starting to rebuild but that fire actually <clears throat> It destroyed a little over 10,000 acres uh, of land, and I'm not sure what the cause, if it was, you know, man-made or a lightning strike or what, whatever the case might have been, but 10,000 acres, you know, many people lost homes, they lost, you know, valuable things in, uh, that were on their property, a lot of animals were lost as a result of this, and sometimes, you know, the fire department actually does find out that this was started because someone flicked a cigarette out the window. You know, it's always amazed me when I used to uh, work at a uh, apartment community up north uh, back in Ohio and I used to go around and I used to clean up the grounds and I would see where people had parked their cars, they would open their door and they would dump the ashtray in the parking lot and then put the clean ashtray back in the car. Or they would walk out of the apartment all the way to the dumpster and then set the trash bag in front of the dumpster, <laughs> you know. Uh, it, it, never it never ceased to amaze me how, you know, mentally and physically lazy people are, but also how they don't take into consideration how that it just, you know, makes the environment look unappealing, right? Those things actually, when it rains, it can wash into the storm drains. Those things into, end up in the rivers. They end up in the, in the lakes and the streams and the oceans, you know. 
the animals have to deal with them somehow. You know, and these are the things that we talked about in the self-control unit and dealing about in, in regards to dealing with these things in the environment when self-control is in practice. Well, when disrespect is not practiced, it's the, it's the same thing. All right. So we see here um, in the next paragraph, if a driver loses control of his car and crashes, this becomes a natural consequence, like the example of somebody not taking care of their campfire and seeing to it that it's extinguished properly before they go to bed or before they go hiking or before they leave the campground. The natural consequence can be that that fire, that forest fire is getting started. So this becomes a natural consequence of driving too fast. If on the other hand the driver is pulled over by the police and is issued a speeding ticket this becomes a force consequence. Now you can see on the next slide there the um, the, the reckless driving, you know, the guy in the weaving in and out of the vehicle there, recklessly driving, uh, you know, they, it's, it's associated very commonly with road rage. Um, you know, people, I saw, in fact, when I was coming to class, I saw someone driving behind someone, literally, it seemed like less than the car's length behind them. And I, it, was, it was interesting because when I looked at the driver, as I was going by, they looked like they were a little bit stressed out, you know, because you never know if that person's going to see your taillights when you stop. And if they don't, well, there you go. You know, they, they, they ram into you. And it doesn't matter if you have insurance or not. Now you got to deal with the inconvenience of, you know, making a police report, getting your car fixed, getting this person's insurance. You know, that's if they have insurance. That's if they stay at the scene of the crime. You know, a lot of people just leave because they don't want it. They don't have financial responsibility. Well, if a person is recklessly driving like that on over to the right there, you see the things that can take place with the police officer in the background. Uh, they can lose their license, they can get tickets, or they can even go to jail. You know, if the crime is serious enough, if the speeding or the, or the effect uh, that they have as a result of failing to control their vehicle is enough, many people have lost their lives as a result of somebody recklessly driving you know, failing to control their vehicle because it was fun or because they were intoxicated or because they were trying to show off, okay? So we have to be mindful of these. You know, driving is actually a privilege. You know, it's not a right. It's a privilege that you earn by showing that you'll follow the rules of the road. All right. So, of course, that is a, that's a forced consequence if a person gets a ticket or if they get their license taken away or if they're placed in jail you know, uh, or have to have a bond. There's these bonds, SR-22 or whatever bonds that you have to get sometimes uh, to get your license back or until you can. So not every disrespectful fact. So this is kind of, um, I think this is where we're picking up from last class. Not every disrespectful act results in an immediate consequence or punishment. Some things actually take a little bit of time. The truth is <coughs> people disrespect each other in many ways without realizing the harmful effects that will eventually come from their actions. The harmful effects that will eventually come from their actions. Um, and sometimes they're, they're unintentional. People don't realize the harmful effects of their actions because they haven't been educated. They haven't been trained to know and to understand that by doing this, you're going to bring harm to someone else, yes. But part of the ripple effect there, because you're all in the water, we're all in the water, so to speak, is those waves are going to come back and hit us at one point or another. Um, on the next slide there, we're going to, we're going to, because we're getting ready to get into a, a, about bullying. Well, let's hold off on that. Well, let's get, let's move down a little bit further before we get to that. So the truth is, people disrespect each other in many ways without realizing the harmful effects that will eventually come from their actions. For example, bullies do not realize that their actions not only hurt their victims, yes, they do hurt their victims, but also themselves. And, and it might be hard to convince a bully that they're actually hurting themselves by bullying others. Because in their mind, they're thinking, no, I'm fine, I feel just fine. You know, it's this, it's this squirt over here that, that I'm just picking on. No big deal. No, but they actually are hurting themselves, and we're going to see that. Bullying others has many natural consequences that sometimes takes years before they are revealed. 
and let's look at um, and let's look at some of the reasons why because uh, this is something that is not taken taken into effect like it like we just covered here sometimes these consequences can come many many years later and you know it might be easy to think well you know how can it come many many years later well could it come because uh, you know the person I bullied in high school you know has been harboring this for for the last 20 years and when I come back for the 20 year class reunion and they they do to me what I did to them or they embarrass me or you know who knows nowadays they probably just pull out a weapon and, and fire well no not always that that sometimes is what some people do they hold on to those things for years but sometimes it could be in the form of your own offspring remember some of the things we taught in how our character is formed one of the factors is genetics okay and our genetics play a play an integral role in the formation of our character and the bullies especially if they have not if they have not been taught or they have not learned or they have not taken the lessons of character education if they were taught it and started to put it to practice in their life and value those things they're they're kind of solidifying that character trait of disrespect in their genes so as a result when and if they do have a child guess what that child is eventually going to display potentially I should say that a child has a propensity or a greater potential to display disrespectful behavior when they get of age and it, you know it could be to other people which causes uh, maybe a burden on the on the the parent or others in the environment you know a child that they call a, a trouble or a problem child in school or at daycare you know they're always picking on others or pushing people off the slide or hitting people or stealing people's you know drinks or, or snacks and things of that nature or it could be the disrespect that the child shows towards the parent right and the parent who was one time a bully might think yeah but that was years ago that was years ago I, I haven't bullied anybody for the last 15 or 20 years it's already in the genes right and you haven't done anything to change it and even if you have done something to change it well the only way you're gonna kind of superimpose or you know suppress that trait in your child's gene is to start teaching them character education as soon as you possibly can right because we all come from different backgrounds many of us were probably bullies many of us have probably been bullied okay or both and so we kind of have to deal with a lot of the things uh, coming forth in our children that we ourselves did when we were younger and so the only way we can deal with it is to educate is to teach is to be patient right because it's not an overnight thing to get rid of those characteristics those traits so let's look at the, um, the next slide there and this is from the acceptance unit page 72 just kind of get a little bit of an idea of, of um, um, bullying it's under bullying is bad news it says did you know that there are some people who actually take pleasure in hurting others and I've seen this before in life and it's really distressing when you see people who you know they they take pleasure in seeing other people suffer you know instead of taking pleasure in seeing other people uh, have joy right you know personally I like to see people enjoy themselves I like to see people you know uh, have a great time right uh, especially when they when they when they grasp hold of something you're trying to teach them whether it's out of the peaceful solution whether it's a lesson they're learning like in math or something uh, when they finally grasp that and that light comes on they're like oh you know that's that's really joyous for a teacher but it says here uh, they have yet to learn the peaceful solution okay they actually take pleasure in hurting others um, and they have yet to learn the peaceful solution uh, we're still on the slide there on page 72 of the acceptance unit uh, which means showing respect for one another and having healthy interactions to build lasting friendships instead notice here they steal the rights of others to be safe and rob people of the opportunity to make friends so this is not just robbing like taking their money or taking uh, you know a possession from a, a house or, or anything like that you can actually rob people 
of the opportunity to make friends. Well, these are called bullies. It is common knowledge that bullying is a problem in schools today. And as we'll see here as we move forward, it's not just the schools. If you are a bully, think about your actions. Choosing to belittle or hurt others for fun or just because you can is cruel. Cruel, C-R-U-E-L, not cool. Picking on, teasing, and physically assaulting someone can affect him or her for life. <coughs> Guess who else it will affect? Now, this is what we're talking about because this is some of the things we're covering here or what we just talked about here on page 107 in the uh, Respect Unit. Guess who else it will affect? You. Studies done, done on adults who bullied others as children prove that they regretted and were ashamed of their actions. Many of them long to go back in time and change the way they treated others. Now, sadly, you know, it, it, sometimes it takes, it takes people sometimes, sometimes years before they realize how their behavior negatively impacted others. Um, sometimes it doesn't hit them until somebody in their school uh, actually uh, takes their own life. And that's a real big problem, you know, uh, suicide of young people and suicide of adults as well, you know, and taking their lives because they've been hammered on and devalued and just pushed down, you know, so much in life. And, and, and in some of these cases, some people, you might think, well, you know, it can't be all that bad. Some people are really never, ever built up, right? They have a dysfunctional family. They don't really have anyone to reach out to. Sometimes they reach out to the guidance counselors and they're doing their best, but the guidance counselors has that one student and they've got another three or 400 other students that they're responsible for. Uh, you know, nobody really is their friends because they're already the oddball out. So, you know, they're not really their friends in public because they don't want to look like they're associating with some. So it's like they have no outlet. They have no one to go to. And then they start to think their life is not worth anything and it would be better if they just weren't here. You know, and like I mentioned before, they engage in a permanent response to a temporary problem, right? Because those high school years, they don't last forever. But when you're in high school or junior high school, you know, it seems like this is your life. This is, you know, I, this is so embarrassing. I can't deal with this. You know, people are always picking on me. You know, this will never end. But that's not the case. And a lot of those bullies and quote unquote jocks and... Um, the popular crowds, you know, a lot of them, you know, they don't really amount to very much when they, when they graduate high school because they're still living in that mentality of high school thinking that the only way to get, get ahead in life is to push others down. Well, that doesn't work in society. You know, you actually, you actually become um, uh, a greater leader by lifting other people up, by teaching others, by training them, by, being care by showing care and compassion and concern for them. So, um... So it says here, they will eventually, um, they don't realize that the harmful effects that will eventually come from their actions. For example, bullies do not realize that their actions not only hurt their victims, but also themselves. Bullying others has many natural consequences that sometimes takes years before they're revealed. And that's one of the things that I mentioned to you um, is, uh, let's see, did I just, uh, yeah, we're going to read that here. Um, oh, no, we're going to read it here in a little bit. One of the things that, um, that we talked about was it can come forth in the form of your own children. You know, it's like uh, I remember hearing sometimes people say, I can't wait till you have children of your own so that you can see how difficult it is to deal with a, a child that's always rebellious or a child that's always talking back. You know, I hope your children treat you the way you treated me, uh, you know, because and eventually it, it will, right? Because those things, you'll start seeing things in your children that even though you might have stopped it, when they're the age you were when you were doing those things, they're going to start doing those things, right? And as parents, especially, and as teachers, as we've learned the peaceful solution, we know we have to be patient. And, and as teachers, in dealing with classrooms and students around that 11 to 13-year-old class range, you know that, that for the most part, these young men and women are doing things that are kind of already, they're already predisposed to do. It's like a clock in their genes, in their, uh, their genetics, that all of a sudden, bing, you know, now they want to strike out and be on their own. 
they know everything already you know have never left the county you know or even the state that they've been in but you know they know everything it depends on who you talk to they they've done it all too they've been the space they've deep dived the mariana's trench and <laughs> you know uh sometimes these young people they'll tell you that you know i'm like you know how deep that is oh yeah i know already oh you know it's really dark down there. i know i've been down there <laughs> it's like okay yeah you're living in another world but um but when you see these things taking place as a teacher who's educated and who understands what are the precursors to these uh, traits or these characteristics that are coming forth from the child, this gives us a point to start working with and to start pinpointing those certain behaviors with the opposite in character education. If we see somebody who's a thief, we start teaching them about honesty. If we see somebody who, 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 who lashes out and yells when something doesn't take place, well, we start teaching them about patience and self-control and so forth. Somebody's always late or leaves their stuff laying around, but we teach them about responsibility and caring for their belongings, all right? So as teachers, you know, there's telltale signs all over the place. We just have to know what to look for, and the only way we can know what to look for is by putting the, the keys in our minds so that we can see, um, have eyes to see uh, the, the, um, the telltale signs to help a person to become better and become, um, and to enjoy life, right? When people don't have these burdens of, of bullying others or trying to look great in front of the crowd or holding on to hatred or a, a mentality of, of, um, of intolerance that we're going to talk a little bit about here, uh, when they don't have to deal with all those burdens, they can kind of, you know, breathe a sigh of relief. Oh, this is what it's like to not have this weight on my shoulder of being this hateful, you know, evil person all the time. And they say, um, I can't remember what it is, is, it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile, or something like that, more muscles to frown than it does to smile. And smiling is so easy, right? You know, try to, try to here's an experiment. Next time you're angry, next time you choose to become angry, right? You choose it. <laughs> no one's made you angry. Try to smile. You know? Try to smile. Fake it until you make it, right? That's what they say. Just try to smile. You know, just give it a try. Try it for yourself and then let us know next time we have a class if you have anything that causes you to be in that situation this week and then see how you respond. Because the physical act of, res of smiling actually psychologically and emotionally changes the way you look at the situation. You know, try to hit your, th your thumb. <laughs> with a, don't, don't try to hit your thumb with a hammer. <laughs> but let's just say whatever takes place in your environment in the next few days that could cause you to, you know, um, have hot displeasure. You know, try to smile. Man, I really, oh, I really hate it when this occurs. <laughs> You know, you probably, you probably got to look like a madman, you know. You know, gone over, you know, so many times in, in these books, the, the power of our, of our minds, both our conscious and our subconscious mind. You, a lot of times we, we victimize ourselves by our circumstances. No, we have control over a lot. Now, don't get me wrong, we understand there's a lot that we don't have control over, and that's what we went over in the, in the acceptance units. You know, accepting things you don't have control over, yes, but taking the things that you do have control over and using them to your advantage. You know, making the best out of this situation, accentuating the positive and eliminating the negative. And if we would take this, this brain, this storehouse of knowledge, and then get control of our heart, where we, our emotions and our decisions come from, and use the things we've been taught in the peaceful solution to make solid, moral, you know, grounded decisions, man, we'll have a much better day. Just, just leaving the house and saying, no, today is going to be an awesome day. Just, just saying something like that can actually set your day off in a positive direction as opposed to, ah, dang it, I gotta go to work again. All right, well, hopefully I can have to deal with this person and their jibber-jabber and this thing and this. Uh, this is probably going to break down and, you know, <laughs> you kind of create that. You, and then a lot of times that's what occurs. You know, you're expecting that and that's what occurs. You kind of draw that stuff onto yourself. Let me move on here. Let's look at our next slide here because here's some more of the effects of bullying here. Um, bullying and its effects. It says, children who bully and are, and are also bullied... Um, Oh, this, that, that was the title there. It says, children and adolescents, this is from the um, stopbullying.gov here. It says, children and adolescents who bully others who are 
and who are also bullied are at the greatest risk for negative mental and physical health consequences compared to those who only bully or are only being bullied. Now, not that there are no negative mental and physical health consequences, but when you're just like, I, I compare it to like being a hitch, you know, uh, being a hitch uh, on a vehicle, you're being pulled by the vehicle and you're also pulling what's behind the hitch. So you're the person who's bullying and being bullied is like acting as that hitch. Um, and they're getting kind of both sides of the coin there. But they have actually a greater risk for negative mental and physical health consequences compared to the others. It says these children and adolescents might experience a combination of psychological problems, negative perceptions of themselves. Remember, we talked a little bit about self-concept in the, in the uh, self-control unit, right? How we see ourselves and the world around us or ourselves in comparison to the world around us. Um, negative perception of themselves and others, uh, poor social skills, conduct problems, how they act, and rejection by their peer group because of, again, cause and effect. They think a certain way, so they act a certain way, so people respond to them in a certain way, thereby it continues to exacerbate the problem and they kind of tend to spiral downhill more and more and more until someone reaches out and helps them by training them, teaching them, and guiding them in the peaceful solution, seeing the value in them so that they can see it in themselves. Now, compared with non-involved peers, those who have bullied others and have also been bullied have been found to be at an increased risk for serious mental illness, be at a, a high risk for thinking about and attempting suicide, and demonstrate heightened aggression, heightened aggression, all right? And so if we take that, Take that and compare that with the um, information in the character unit on lesson plan two, page A, under starts in the home, under our next slide there. It says at the very beginning, it says this, this second chapter takes a unique approach to character development in that it not only teaches about the impact of family in the development of character. And so remember what we talked about? You know, sometimes we can actually pass these things on to our children uh, through our genetics but also through how we interact in our child's environment as they're growing up. Because that's also a form of teaching, how we choose to interact with our children, um, with, our, with our spouses and so forth, or others in their presence. It teaches about the impact of family in the development of character, but also informs students about the differences between a dysfunctional and healthy family. This is an important distinction to teach our children uh, because so many children have been traumatized for so long. They are unaware of what a normal, healthy family should consist of. Without this knowledge, they are more likely to repeat. Now notice here, because of how they were raised, what was in their environment, because of them not being trained, not being educated, not experiencing or knowing what a normal, healthy family should consist of, they are more likely to repeat the same abuses to their children when they become parents. And also along the way, engage in those same behaviors with those who they interact with on a regular everyday basis. Whether it's a teacher, whether it's a peer, whether it's a sibling, or just somebody that they might interact with out on the streets, in the store. And sometimes as we, as we talked about in the, in the character unit chapter two, even with animals. Right? They start to engage in, in violence um, and disrespectful behavior towards animals as well. It is a known fact that many children who are abused become abusers themselves. All right, Becomes, become abusers themselves. Uh, let me see here. I just want to make sure I uh, don't skip anything. All right, so we'll come back to that. All right, so let's continue on in, on page 107. So it says, um, we'll just go back, up, back a little bit. It says, bullying others has many natural consequences that sometimes takes years before they re are revealed. For instance, did you know that bullies at school who get away with it? Now, you don't really get away with it. How do we know that you don't get away with it? Go all the way back to the top of the page in the very first sentence. For every, every action, there is a reaction. And we just got finished, and the Peaceful Solutionist just got finished showing us here 
it, it laid the groundwork and saying, listen, for every action, there's a reaction. But some of these things take a while to manifest themselves. Some of the actions might take years before they actually manifest themselves. Okay? Just kind of like what we talked about in the previous uh, classes when people engage in risk-taking behaviors and some of the STDs that a person can get in their youth can actually hide in the body and manifest itself 20, 30 years later in the brain, uh, in the eyes, uh, in the muscles, in the joints of the individual. And these are consequences, consequences that come from engaging in those types of behaviors. So, I wrote a note here. Um, oh, you never get you never get away with, of course, these these bullyings, these activities of bullying, or this disrespectful behavior, because as we just read, there's psychological uh, harm, there's um, paranoia, right? There's anxiety. There's always the wonder or the thought that you're going to run into the person that you bullied later in life, right? Because you don't have that that friend group. That, um, that crew that you used to run with in high school, that everybody's got your back. No, people move on after high school. They kind of, most of the time, they grow up and they, they realize they have to start working. They have to take care of them, themselves, their family. If they want a family, they're going to have to have a means of supporting them, right? Life goes on. So sometimes people are they're a little paranoid because they're afraid. They realize how they treated other people was not right. And like we mentioned before in previous classes, if a person has not been taught the peaceful solution and, you know, you engage in some type of behavior that could be a trigger to them responding with disrespect, and we're not, that's going to be the next chapter, uh, you can have a situation uh, that is um, pretty dangerous, pretty volatile, very quick. For instance, did you know that bullies who, bull bullies, did you know that bullies at school who get away with it, or seemingly get away with it, later become bullies at work. And by the age of 23, about 60% of boys identified as bullies in middle school had at least one conviction. 60%. And you think about how many bullies there are in school, especially in today's day and age. Um, and this was back in, in 2000, the early 2000, 2001, 2003. Um, 60% is quite a bit. Let's see here. Let's um. Let's look at. Let's see one, two, three. Let's go to the third slide there. Bullying in the workplace. Uh, we'll skip the other two ones there. Um, here's some statistics there are, are regarding bullying in the workplace. It says the most recent data shows that 79.3 million of U.S. workers are affected by workplace bullying. Okay, men represent 67% of bullies, while 33% are women. So yeah, there's a mixture of both men and women, but men are kind of the biggest of the uh, of the two groups. It says the bullies victim resignation, the bullies victim resignation rate. Uh, so people who resign from work as a result of being bullied is a uh, 23%. Workplace bullying is considered. Um, uh, the second leading cause of stress at work. And I should have did something different there, but, uh, but I'll, I'll figure it out later. I got, my, I got my numbers wrong there on that. But I think I have... Uh, all right. Okay, there we go. I got the new numbers. Workplace bullying is considered the second leading cause of stress at work. The second leading cause of stress at work. And the cost of bullying in the workplace goes up to $100,000 per year per victim. Now, I had there at 33%. That was the wrong number. If you look at the number underneath that, which is 23, which is the result of, of uh, resignation. And that's probably just a small number because not everybody who is bullied at the workplace resigns. Sometimes they kind of, you know, they'll, they'll go to the human resources department and, and you know, fight, fight or, you know, get the human resources to kind of address the issue, right? They don't just leave their job. But when you think about that, 
23% of people resign, right? And the cost of bullying in the workplace goes up to $100,000. Now, this could be, this could be uh, people resigning, so this is a loss of work for the company, loss of laborers for the company, which means loss of production, which means they have to spend money to advertise, to bring people in, then they've got to train that person, they've got to pay for their mistakes and everything, they've got to deal with lawsuits and human resources and issues and all these things. But when you take into consideration about 23%, which is probably a very low number of people who resign uh, in the U.S. of the 79.3 million who are affected by workplace bullying, that number comes out to $1.8 trillion either that, are, that is spent or lost per year just as a result of bullying in the workplace. $1.8 trillion, okay? And these are some of these ripple effects, these waves, these cause and effects that go out and affect people, okay? Um, you know, we, don't, we never get a, away from the effects of the things that we cause. All right, so let's go back here to page 107 and let's look at that last paragraph there. It says, like bullying, other acts of disrespect have serious consequences such, consequences, such as loss of friends, bad reputation, detention, suspension, or expulsion from schools. Uh, this is something that, of course, impacts people in this, this age range here, you know, the 11 through 13 year old age range. Um, but it also goes even further than that because some of these acts of disrespect that young people engage in, they can actually be tried as adults, okay? Um, well, let me see if I'll get to it before we, how much time we have, 622. I did not, oh, oh yeah, yeah, it's right here. If we look at this next slide, in fact, here, it's at the very bottom, it's right in front of me. Here's some of the examples of other acts of disrespect. Um, fighting or intentionally hurting others, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be fighting, but it could be intentionally hurting others. I've heard of reports of people in schools um, on purpose actually tripping people or pushing people down the stairs. And if you've ever been in some of these old schools, they have a terrazzo flooring, and it's pretty much like concrete. You know, the stuff's pretty hard. And people have gotten seriously injured as a result of those things, okay? So it's not always necessarily fighting. It could just be intentionally doing things to cause harm to other people. Theft is another thing. And depending on the type of crime or the value of the thing that was stolen can determine what type of uh, consequence that a person has. Uh, sexual harassment or, or even rape, which is the, one of the greatest forms of disrespect. You know, these things, and I'm not, I'm not just talking about... Um, in the workplace. These are things that both take place in the workplace and at school. This is the, these are real uh, situations that our young men and women are having to deal with on, a, on an everyday basis. In junior high, yeah. High school, yeah. And sadly, probably even elementary school. You know, it, is, it was completely shocking you know, when we've gone to some of these elementary schools and we were seeing and dealing with children who were already engaging in a lot of these risk-taking behaviors that, you know, just people who are, you know, married adults should be dealing with. You know, they're already engaging in these things and suffering the consequences as well. Well, part of the influences in their environment are, are, are pushing these things, pushing them in that direction to engage in these risk-taking behaviors, not showing them what the consequences are, okay? That's television. That's Hollywood for you. It's make believe. All right. So um, another, uh, some other acts of disrespect is uh, gossip and uh, starting rumors. This, of course, can hurt people's reputation. And like we read, it actually can steal people's opportunities to to make new friends or or to even move up in life. Uh, lying and being deceitful or deceiving others. Right? Trying to oh man, this like we mentioned. Oh, that's that's not going to hurt you. Right? Just this is. This is all natural, organic weed. It's the best that money can buy. Okay? Yeah. And it'll get the person in a, in a heap of trouble because that's a gateway drug that can lead to other hardcore drugs that a person can go sp spiral downhill very, very quickly. And lastly there we see homicide and murder. And I just looked up, I tried really fast before class. It's funny, not funny, but it was interesting because we were um, doing some work out in Midland yesterday and on the way back from Midland, probably about 
about, I don't know, 30 or 40 miles out of Colorado City, I got a report on my phone that residents of Colorado City are being urged to shelter in place because there is an active shooter in the city, you know? And, and uh, it's just amazing how many of these things are taking place on an everyday basis. Um, just in the last four days, three days, today's the 17th, right? So three, four days, since 514, there have been over 200 reported, 200 acts of gun violence in the United States, throughout various states, okay? Over 200 acts of gun violence in just the last, you know, three days, three or four days. It's no wonder people are, you know, they don't feel safe anymore in society. No wonder that people are looking at, they think that the only way to respond to these acts of aggression is to have weapons of aggression to respond, to react with, right? Um, but as we know in the Peaceful Solution, the best way to solve these problems is starting to educate. Now, I don't mean you can sit there if somebody's got a gun to your head and start telling them that they need to practice self-control, you know, that, that's probably not going to work, you know. But, you know, it, it goes way back. It goes a lot further back. And, of course, we can't go back to the past, but we can start right now. And what we're doing here, what you're doing here, is a contributing factor to the solution. You're actually a part of the solution that's going to change this whole thing around. It might not seem like it right now, but remember what we covered at the very top of this page. Every action, for every action, there is a reaction. So even though you might not see what you're doing right now in learning and being here and taking this class and putting, you know, working your hardest, you know, and putting forth the effort to be a practicer and a teacher of the peaceful solution, those are your actions. Reactions are going to come as a result of it, guaranteed. All right. So let's see here. Let's uh, finish out this paragraph. So it says, racist, for example, who choose not to accept that, uh, that all people have a right. They have a right. Um, they have a right to live in our society, will suffer from the natural consequence of their own hate. And you remember what we talked about in uh, the acceptance unit on page 24. Let me just read that real quick there. Um, it talks about the things that actually lead to hate. It's like a little process there. And on page 24 it says, an equation of hate. Um, intolerance, which is unwilling to accept any person and, and unwilling to accept them um, I'm sorry, unwilling to help them overcome things that are not beneficial. Inconsiderate, which is displaying a lack of thoughtful concern for others. Racism, the mistreatment of a group of people due to nationality and ethnicity. And discrimination, the treatment or consideration based on class or category rather than individual merit, partiality, or prejudice. Those four things. Intolerance plus inconsiderate plus racism plus discrimination equal hate. Okay, that's the equation for hate. And that is an intense hostility or an extreme dislike. Okay, so when a person, you know, part of the consequences for them engaging in, this, in these things is they're suffering from their own hate. And like I said, that, that hate becomes like a a weight on a person's back that they have to carry around with them um, I say it for the rest of their life or at least until they're educated in the peaceful solution they will never know the peace of being able to accept others eventually their disregard for others could lead to acts of disrespect which could lead to the forced consequences of jail or prison sentence or they could even uh, lose their life as a result of it because someone else who uh, does not think the same way that they do and they have not been trained in the peaceful solution you know they respond with the same type of intolerance or aggression that they uh, felt coming forth from that person so these are just some of the things that take place in society you know these basic rights are taken from people they're actually stolen from people when when disrespect is shown, when hate is practiced and, and displayed on a regular basis. But, you know, we can actually turn this around. And we're going to see 
We're going to get the, the actual keys of how to do this as we move forward and kind of finish out this lesson here. We're going to see the rewards of respect that's coming up when uh, David uh, opens us up with the next class there. And he's going to be the next teacher, which is going to be um, the 21st, I believe, 521 of... Uh, of this upcoming Sunday at 5.30 Central Standard Time. So make sure you're here and make sure you bring your books. We look forward to uh, seeing you here at the next class, and we hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you all for coming.